What is the distance in units between the points negative 5, 5, and 3, negative 10? Now, most of you out there probably know that this is, um, that these two points are on the coordinate plane. And if you don't know what that is, just explain that. So these are the y and x, the y and x coordinates. Might as well draw these a little longer. And the side, this little part, the point where the x and y coordinates intersect, that's the origin. Which is 0, 0, and again, if you're really not used to coordinates and you don't know what zero zero means, well, the first number is how many points you how many points you are from the from from the origin. So the origin is kind of a special point. So if you were uh, negative two zero, well zero. The second number tells you how far you are from the y-axis, um, from, from the uh, origin on the y-axis. Well, that's just zero, meaning you're nowhere from the y-axis, um, from the origin, meaning you are on the origin. And the negative two means you're on, you're, you're on this x-coordinate. Negative two, well, again, this side over here is positive. This whole thing over here is positive. This whole thing over here is negative. All of it is negative, but both coordinates are negative. The stuff over here, well, now if you know a little bit about x coordinates and y coordinates, you can see that because this side is positive, that means this part right here is positive, and this part right here is positive. And because this part right here is positive, that means in this region right here, the x coordinate is positive, and because this part of the y of the of the y axis is positive, that means this side of the y axis is negative, meaning the y axis um the the, the y axis is negative, the x axis is positive, meaning we have positive and then negative. And similarly over here, the x axis is negative and the y axis is positive. And you can probably guess that negative 2 means we're going this way, right? So just say negative 2 is right here. And this point right here is just the point negative 2, 0. And if you just have a different coordinate, I'll just say 3, negative 1. Where none of the coordinates are zero, well then you can basically do the same thing. The x coordinate, you go three on the x coordinate. You're three away from the origin. So that's three. And then negative one, well, you can see down here is the negative part, meaning you go down one. So 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 that's negative one. Okay, this is getting a little messy and as well erase the origin. Meaning this point right here, down here, is the point three negative one. Three negative one. Okay. So that's that. And they want to also tell you that okay. You also might have guessed this that the x axis is basically a number line, right? Because number line origin, well that's just zero, right? Zero, zero, both coordinates are zero. So, and well, negative, well, well that means we're going left. So this is negative two, and positive, well that just means you're going right, which is positive, that, that's three right there. So. You, can, you, can, you might refer to this as a 1D coordinate plane, and some people do call it that. This is a number line is basically a 1D coordinate plane, 
And this is a 2D coordinate plane, any point, two, any 2D shape. And in fact, there's even 3D coordinate planes that looks like that, that look like this, where you have an x-axis, a y-axis, and, and even a z-axis. It's a little complicated, but you know learn that when you're a little bit older. So basically, this is the x-axis. This is the x-axis, and then the y-axis. And in the 3D model I just showed you have an x-axis a y-axis and the new z-axis and you can probably know that there's no 4d coordinate plane but if there was there would probably be like a fourth variable the the variable right before y and then you just have a 4d coordinate plane but i don't know what that is so anyways just move on from this introduction and we go to the erase that the real problem and I'll leave negative 2 and 3 on here. Negative 1. So, points negative 5, that means, again, if we think of the x-axis as a number line, we know that negative 5, we're going 5 left on the number line. So that's probably around here, 5. And you go up 5. So, so this is uh, the point negative 5, 0, you just go up 5. It's probably around here. So that's the ordered pair. Negative 5, 5. Now, 3, negative 2, well, that means you're going right 3 on the, sorry, right 3 on the, um, uh, on the x-axis, because, again, x, um, the x-coordinate is positive, and negative 10, well, that just means we're going down on the y-axis, because, again, Look, if, if you just take this, take this and just slide it up, you get the y coordinate, the y axis. So the y axis is again, well, like it, like you probably guessed, basically the vertical, a vertical number line. So go down 10, extend this down. 10 is probably around here. Negative 10. So that means this is the ordered pair of three. Three, negative ten. For some reason, I keep forgetting the other vertices. Anyways, so now we just now we just have to find the distance between these two points. Hey, wait a minute. First, we can take this point. Again, lot, mo most coordinate grids, or a lot of them, have like this kind of thing. Okay, I'm not good at drawing coordinate grids, but. They have like this kind of, this this kind of idea at least, where if you if if you want want to walk from this point to this point, you can just go down and right. Well, you can do the same thing here, right? Even though I didn't draw these little imaginary lines, you can still do the same thing. You know, walk down. You know, walk right to this point. But of course, you don't want this, right? The, 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 but they don't want this. They want, like, the distance, not like this kind of walking L shape. So they want this. Well, L shape? Well, in an L, that's a right angle, meaning this is a right triangle. We can just figure out the lengths of these, um, of these two legs of the right triangles and then use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. So might as well mark this as a right angle. Well, we know from this first coordinate that you went over here, 5, and then up 5, meaning this right here is 5. And we know here that we want, that we want over 3, down down 10. And because this, this segment right here is parallel and it's congruent to this segment right here, this is also 10. And similarly, we can see because we went over 3, that means this little segment right here is the same as this little segment down here. We need this down here is 3. And again, this is 5 because we went 
over here five. Now, don't get confused. Don't say this is negative five. Okay, that's not right. You can't go a negative amount of distance. That only works with subtraction. So, so still five because even though this is it says negative five, but that's where we end up. Where we end up is negative, but the distance we walk. I say because I don't say that we we go left. I say we go left five. I don't say we go left negative five. Right? That just doesn't make any sense. So this is still five. I mean, this segment down here is five. So now, so now we just have this is h. So here is h. That's the hypotenuse is h. That means ten plus five, which is fifteen squared plus well five plus three is eight squared is h squared. Use the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to just do this back here. So just 289. Uh, equals 8 squared. Now I have a feeling that this is 17 squared. I'm going to check that really fast. Guessing does have a glorious history in math, but you just guess your way to guess your way to all the answers. That won't work out so well. I wonder how many answers you get right out of 10 if you just go stole them. Seven times seven is, well, I guess technically if um you had like multiple choice questions, I guess technically like half the time you might be able to guess, but um, you should always check your answer when you're not sure. And sure enough, we do get 289, meaning our answer is just 17.